let's take a look at the outputs of a couple different virtual instruments in Studio One. So first off, complete control. We open up the instrument and we scroll over to the GUI. We click the outputs tab. Notice we have 16 stereo outs. All right, next up, battery four. Same thing, we open up the GUI. Again, we have 16. They may be uh, reported slightly different. These ones say one, two, three, four, instead of one and two, but it's the same principle, 16 stereo outs. Let's go over to Easy Drummer. Same thing again here. We click the outputs and we have 16 different outputs that can be used. Why do we have different outputs and why are they useful? If you're new to Studio One, really, really quickly, let's have a quick peek. If we open up our mixer, we can assign different outputs for individual elements. When these elements are designed to an individual output, it basically gives us the control to be able to separate these. So now, as you can see, I activated these outputs. Now these are all coming into the console on a different channel. So that can be very useful. Let's hop over to contact and take a look at the outputs in the section over here. Notice we have contact stereo one, and then we have aux one, aux two, aux three, aux four. And then we have a bunch of them that say unassigned. This to me is very confusing. I just want it to show up as 16 stereo outputs that I can configure any way that I need to, regardless of whether I'm working with a drum kit or orchestral libraries, anything. Usually 16 stereo outs is more than enough for me to work with. Okay, now full disclosure, you may look up different tutorials and you may have different people talking about custom naming things and using mono outputs and stereo. You can even use surround, but for the sake of this tutorial, this is gonna be really simple. I just wanna show you how to create 16 stereo outputs and how we can have that show up here instead of this aux one, two, three, four. Step one, you wanna make sure that your outputs are visible. You can click the GUI and if they're not visible, just click this little section and you should be able to see it. Step two, our very first thing that we need to do before we start messing with anything is save output section preset as. Call it whatever you want. I've just called mine default contact multi-out routing and go ahead and save that. This will give you kind of like a safety backup if you need to change back to anything. If things don't go as expected, you can always get back to the default setup that contact has when you install it. Now let's get to work. First thing I wanna do is I wanna clear the routing of these aux tracks. And I'm not really gonna get into why I wanna do that. Let's just go ahead and do it. So I click the bottom section and then we can click either one of these where it says plug in out one and two. Think of these as left and right. I'm gonna click this, scroll down to the very bottom and click not connected. I will mouse click in here. Same thing for this one. Now that this is done, we use the right arrow and we're going to rinse and repeat for all of these over here. Not connected, we'll go right again, scroll down, not connected, scroll down, not connected, and we have one more. Scrolling all the way down, not connected, all the way down, not connected, okay. So we've done them all at this point, I'm going to click okay. It gives us a message, please close and reopen all plugin instances, saving your work beforehand in order to make sure changes become effective. Okay, I'm just going to click okay. And this is something we're gonna to have to do in a moment, but I'm not going to do this step yet because we're gonna make some more changes before I want this to be um, saved and recalled this way. Okay, so now that this is done, I'm going to click this plus arrow over here. Now there's lots of different ways that you can approach this, but for me, sometimes the easiest way to do something, if I'm looking at a patch bay and it's all messy, I unplug everything and just restart from the beginning and I build things systematically. So that's the same approach we're going to take here. So for quantity, I know that I want 16 in total. Now for the number of channels, this should really be called channel width because this basically means stereo. If you had one, it would mean mono. So let's think of two as simply a stereo track. Now, for the sound card host output, this is important. You want to make sure you scroll to the very top of the list and choose the very first option, which is contact stereo one, one. What the one and the two mean is left and right. And what contact stereo one means is the very first output that we have available. So I'm going to choose this first one. And then as long as you have this next option, checked, which is a sending output assignment, that's all you really need to worry about. 
Now, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to choose to delete existing channels before creating new ones. The reason I'm going to do this is because I want everything to be wiped and I want it to restart everything. I don't want to have anything be like input one and two is accidentally connected to three and four. I just want it to be a clean slate. So one more time, we're going to use 16, number of channels is two. The very first option that we have available, ascending output assignment is enabled and delete existing channels before creating new ones. That's also enabled. This option, I don't want you to worry about this yet. Let's click OK. All right. So now what we have is we have a brand new output assignment. We have stereo one, stereo two, stereo three, stereo four, all the way to stereo 16. Notice we still have aux one, two, three, four. I actually don't think it's possible to completely remove these. I think they will always be there, um, but they're not routed currently. But the important thing is that we have everything set up like this. Now, at this point, you may say to yourself, well, this is perfect. This is exactly what I need. So you'd click this option over here, and lo and behold, it still looks the exact same. That's because there's one last step that you need to do before this will kind of click or stick. And the way that we do that is by clicking the same option again, and you go to the second category, Save Current Output Section State as Default for... In my case, I'm using the VST version. I actually have audio units completely disabled uh, in Studio One on my system. So I'm only running VST version. Now, you could choose for all formats. And if you're using audio unit version, you could use AU plugin. Um, but I'm going to just choose VST plugin for now. What this is doing is it's resetting the default state that the VST plugin will use. Okay, so I'm going to click that. And one last thing you can do before we save and close everything is if you want to, you could save a new output section. So I've done one over here. It's called 16 stereo outs. Uh, you don't have to do that, but it's something you can do. So once this is done, here is the trick. We have to actually save and then close. Make sure that there's no sessions or songs that are open that are using any instant instances of contact. And then once we reinstantiate a song and we reload contact, then it's going to work. So just to prove this, let's take one last look at this. It's still looking this way. I'm going to click save. Now I'm going to close this session. I have another session running in the background, but it just has audio tracks. Now watch what happens now when I load contact. It's going to load contact. And if I click the output section, brilliant. We have contact stereo one, stereo two, stereo three, stereo four, all the way to stereo 16. For those of you that might be really picky or say, okay, but what about the aux one, aux two, aux three, aux four? I'm just gonna interject and say, if you only want 16 stereo outputs and you want them to be available in the output section, that's it, you're done. These steps are all you need to do. Now every instance of contact you use in Studio One moving forward will finally look like this, which is a little bit more um, in line with what we see from other virtual instruments. But if you wanna kind of be OCD and say, well, let's fix the routing of this, we can do that pretty easily. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna click down in the bottom section and here where it says not connected for aux one, I'm gonna scroll down and this is another reason why I, I unplugged everything and made sure that they weren't connected. I'm going to scroll down to where it says aux one, and I'm going to enable this one, and I'm going to scroll down to where it says aux one again, and I'm going to enable the two, which is the right, and we'll go to the next one, and this one, I'm going to scroll down to aux two one, and this one will be aux two two, and we'll scroll across here. This will be aux three one, which is the left. And this will be aux three right. And we'll go one more. And this one will be aux four. So if we go aux four one. And this one here will be aux four two, which will be the right. Now I'm going to click OK. Again, it's going to give us the same message. So now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, all the way up to our stereo pairs, our 16 stereo pairs. And then it's incrementally going up 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40. At this point, I could even save one more preset if I wanted to. I'm going to call this, um, let's call this 16 stereo, and then I'll say plus four stereo aux. 
And that kind of makes sense to me. And I'm going to save this. And also, I'm going to actually make this my default. And this will be my default for the VST plugin versions. And then, of course, we know that I have to save and close everything before that is going to take effect. So if I was to take this, let's save it. In fact, I'm also just going to remove this altogether. And then now if I click uh, a brand new song, so we'll go with new song. And I'm just going to throw this right on my desktop for now. Now, if I load an instance of contact, you'll see over here we have our routing, our 16 stereo contact channels and our four aux. And if I scroll across here, our four aux channels are now connected. So if you want to do any aux routing within contact, these are usable now, uh, but they're incrementally in a better order for me. And now this actually makes sense. And this is how it will be displayed for me every time that I open up contact from now on. Anyways, that's all the time I have available for today. I hope that you found this content useful. If you did, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Any questions or comments, leave them down below. I'll do my absolute best to get back to you. And as always, we will catch you in the next video. Cheers.